Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. beginning in almost every civilization there has come a time when the troubles of a people become so great that in desperation they seek just about any means to ease their hopelessness so often in the past they have turned to a single person to lead them out of their misery and confusion sometimes that man has acted for the good of his people almost as frequently he's brought them to their own destruction Upon these hands, I bear the curse of my child's blood. Oh, gods, what dirge can I sing? What funeral song, what lamentation as I rock back and forth, cradling my dead son here in my arms? You gods, be merciful to a miserable, unhappy woman who should be in her grave. The drama on the Night of the Dead is based on one of the most moving tragedies of the ancient Greeks, the Bacchae of Euripides. It was especially written for the Mystery Theater by Arnold Moss. It stars John Vickery and Marion Seldes. I'll be back in a moment with Act One. Long, long ago, a tiny privateer sailing under the flag of no nation drops anchor and discharges its passengers on an uninhabited, desolate island lapped by the warm waters of the South Atlantic. The place becomes a sanctuary for some hundred wanderers seeking refuge from persecution, a place where they can practice without being molested, their belief in more than a single god. A hundred years go by. The island's population has found a way to tear a day-to-day existence out of the barren, unwilling earth. Until one particular summer, in his crude palace, the island's young governor, Pentheus, listens to the words of his old and trusted advisor, Cadmus. Your excellence, my governor, you must listen. Stop pacing like some wild and untamed beast. I listen, Cadmus. For two months now, I listen. The time for talk is ended. We now must act. What can we do that we have not yet done? My thoughts exactly. But I dare not say, Your Honor. Say, speak freely, Cadmus. You have my promise. I shall not punish you. We know our island is dying. For all these months of summer, no single drop of water has fallen from the skies. Not one. We know. And each morning when the sun lets loose its light to warm the earth, our grazing herds of cattle, they lie down. And in a final gasp, their tongues lick at the air, reaching for the water that is not there, for the grass that dried nothing weeks ago. You have a plan? Let's hear it. We must leave this island, all of us. Leave? We must board our ships and seek another land, a gentler, kinder land, just as our fathers and their fathers did so many years ago. And there lies madness. Our people's wanderings ended a hundred years ago. After all this toil, to leave it to the seagulls once again? Never. Not while I still live. No, Cadmus. We stay. And die. As you wish, my governor. Look, Cadmus. I know the little water we have stored from heaven's bounty is undrinkable. I know the plants dry up and wither without the nourishment of rain. I know the cattle die of thirst. I know the people die of thirst. By all the gods who should preserve us, what can we do? Drink water from the sea? 
dig deeper wells. We've scratched the earth until we've reached the bottom. And still, no water. Pentheus, my governor, look. Look at what I carry in my arms. Who let you in here? No one could keep me out. Look down at my poor son. This pitiful thing I cradle in my arms. Take care of her. See, she's taken home. Come, come, my poor woman. Follow me. Don't touch me, you old fool. Look, look at my son. This baby, his breath, it comes no more. We are sorry, sister. We grieve with you for your child's death. <laughs> you grieve with me. How kind of you. Then bring him back to life. What have you done to see that my child stayed alive? The best we knew. <laughs> Not good enough. Look at his swollen belly, at his staring eyes, his ribs. Would you care to count them? It's so easy, Your Excellence. So easy. Here, fondle him in your arms. No! Don't turn away from me. Stay away, woman. Don't come near me. With my long nails, I'll tear you. Enough! I say enough. And now, go home. Bury your dead. Bury him deep. And know one thing. What? Unless the rains come soon, we're all as good as dead. As dead as your poor child. Cadmus here. And you. And I. What must we do? The one thing left to all of us. Which is? Lift our eyes to the skies above and pray. Please, leave us now. You gods who hold our destiny in your hands, who choose to smile upon us for the good we do, to punish us for our evil, spare your people and your land from this cruel, deadly drought. Open the skies and let the cool rain fall. Look down at the misery of your poor island and then weep for it. Let your tears fall from the heavens above. Let your tears soak into this parched earth. Show us your pity. Cadmus? Uh, are you all right? Are you hurt? A, a little shaken, but I'm well. But what was that? A raging wind that seemed to come from nowhere, roaring its swift way over the land. With the strength of a thousand men. As quickly as it came, so quickly has it gone. Somewhere among the gods we worship, there must be one with pity in his heart for our poor, suffering land. Pendius, my son, I bring great news. Agave, my mother, what is it? We're saved. Our land is saved. At last our prayers are to be answered. What are you saying, mother? The drought is about to end. How can that be, Agave? The sky's turned blue. No single drop of rain has fallen. We'll no longer need the rain. What nonsense are you speaking, mother? A god has come to our island. A god has seen our anguish and our heartache. A god has come to answer our prayers. Nonsense. Who is this god? Or better, this one you call a god. He is beautiful. He's so beautiful. Who is he? We, we do not trifle with divinity, Agave. We are the heirs of customs and traditions hallowed by age and handed down to us by our father. What has he done, this god of yours, that makes you so sure this cursed drought will end? First, he passed the goatskins out among us. Goatskin? Filled with wine. They were sweet wine. I touched the wine. I felt it on my lips. This was no trick. By what name does this street magician call himself? From what city, from what land has he come here? Zenos, he calls himself. Zenos, the stranger. What land, what city? My son, he has come to us from heaven. I see. Cadmus? Your Excellency. Whoever this Zenos, this stranger is, we must get rid of him at once. He threatens trouble. Great trouble for us all. We've grief enough without this mischief maker. We'll stop this waving of his wand if it's the last thing that we do. Come, young 
woman, join the rest of us. You too must celebrate the happy coming of a god. I am too deep in sorrow, Agave. No, put down that child of yours. Let the living comfort you. Uh, that's better. Now come and sing his praises with the rest of us. Blessed are those who know the mysteries of this God. Blessed are those who sanctify their lives in worshiping this God. Come help you, little woman. Blessed, mm -hmm. blessed are those whose heads are crowned oh, with ivy. Now together, blessed, blessed, blessed are, are they. Hail, Zeno, hail. Born of the gods on high. this island. Drink more of the wine I've given you. I am Zenos, the stranger. Come to your suffering land in answer to your prayers, to a land whose people cry to me in anguish, whose people call to me for help. I am Agave, mother of our governor, Pentheus. Welcome, mother. We need you, Zenos. Now, you young woman, let him hear your voice. How can you help us? Tell us what we must do. Believe in me. Believe. We believe. We know you are a god. A god whose pity reaches out to all of us. We believe. You know that only I can end the drought that sucked this island dry. That only I can give you all the water you need. We know, we know, my lord. Zenos, hear my voice. This bundle that I carried in my arms. That was my infant son. Go. Take him with your own mouth. Breathe life into him again. That, alas, I cannot do. How then can I have faith in you? How can I believe that you have powers greater than any other man who walks the earth? I promise you that deaths like this will come no more to you. How? How will you do that? I lift my staff and strike it so against this rock. Flames burst from my staff and see. A fountain of cool water comes bubbling from the earth. Have faith in me and it will grow into a mighty stream pouring its rich blessings from the mountaintops. Now I strike this other rock and lo, a spring of wine, a good red wine comes spurting from the ground. Come, all of you. Drink of the wine, this holy wine. And last, I touch the soil here, gently with my staff. You, you young woman, scratch the sod with your bare fingers. Tell me what you see. Milk, sweet white milk comes welling from the ground. Blessed is he who brings us all these wonders. Holiness, angel of heaven. Holiness, gliding on golden wings. There is no greater God than Zenos. Wait, out of the way, women, all of you. Scatter yourselves. A wild and raging bull stands, glaring at us, his eyes aflame. His hoofs tear up the earth beneath him. Run for your lives. We'll all be torn to pieces on his horns or else trampled to death by his sharp moves. Stay where you are, women. Stand your ground. He will not harm you. Here he comes. Heaven help us. Stay. Stay, my friend. Stay. You glare at me, do you? I strike you with my staff. So. The ball has toppled to its knees. Its eyes are glazed. Its tongue hangs from its mouth. The sweat drips off its body. It rolls on its back. The beast is dead. Down. Down on your knees, women of the island. Sing out with songs of thanks for your deliverance. Sing to the God who has rescued you. Women of our island, I've come to order you back to your homes, each one of you. You're acting as if all of you were mad. Oh, call it what you like, Pentheus, my son. The drought is over. I see water pouring down the mountainsides. I see the wine, the milk, the drops of honey. Mother, listen. These are the crafty games of a trickster of the street. What you and all the other women think you see is some weird fantasy. A blinding of the brain brought on by all the wine he's fed you. There is no water. 
no drop of milk, nor honey, only goat skins filled with wine. Leave here at once. Go to your homes. I order you. Well, what have I done, my lord, that you, you should be so angry? The good women of our island have gone lunatic, and you have driven them to this. You've corrupted their minds. You've poisoned their souls, and this I will permit no longer. Well, what do you plan to do? My governor. I've warned you. Warn all you like. I am a god born in a stroke of lightning carried here in a powerful wind. Then let that wind carry you back to where you came. Make yourself to disappear. If not, what will you do? Don't press me, Zenos. I have a few tricks of my own. As Pentheus confronts the stranger with an ultimatum, the powers of civilized order and routine are pitted against the most primitive and disruptive forces of nature. What can Pentheus do to reestablish his authority over the women of his island? And does this stranger, who claims to be a god, have the power to thwart him? What new and hidden magic has he in what Pentheus calls his bag of tricks? I'll return shortly with Act Two. Defending the existence of God, the French philosopher Voltaire once wrote, if God did not exist, it would have been necessary to invent him. Is the Zenus of our story a true divinity among these people who believe in many gods? Or is it the invention of a fertile imagination, his own invention, for purposes of his own? Pentheus, governor of the island, is at his wit's end as he speaks once more with old Cadmus. This man, this god, whatever he calls himself, has only added to our misery, Cadmus. The drought goes on, the cracked earth, dry as ever, and he's robbed our women of their senses. Yes, he, he has them thinking that the water flows from mountaintops and that the drought is ended. Cadmus, what's even worse, the women's brains are sodden with the wine he's brought them. Uh, and yes, my lord, have you thought why he should want increase of our misfortunes? What could we have done to earn this added sorrow? I've no idea. Unless he... Unless? I hesitate to speak. Go on, Cadmus, tell me. Unless, your excellence, this Zenos is indeed... A god. What? A, go a god we've never heard of till this moment. A god who's come to pay us for some unknown wrong we may have done here. You think that that's a possibility? Why not? Cadmus, I've known you since I was a tiny babe in swaddling clothes. All my life I've trusted you, relied on your good judgment, on your wisdom. True? Yes, true, my lord. But now you speak to me as if you too were mad. <laughs> Admit, there is the smallest chance... Silence, old man! Uh, don't try to wipe your madness off on me. Well, he hasn't done all that much harm, at least not yet. He, he just talks more than he should. Your tongue without reins, defiance, stubborn pride, deception, they lead to sure disaster. This Zenos is a fraud, a dangerous clown who hunts a kind of glory. His, his simple gift of wine, the innocent gladness of the great... Innocent indeed, I've heard enough. Go with your soldiers to where this prophet prophesies. Surprise him in the deadness of the night. Make him your prisoner, clap him tight in chains, and march him here in irons. My son, what brings you to this part of the palace? You come so seldom to the women's quarters. I must speak with you. Well, it won't disturb you if I go on with my work. I'm almost finished. Work? Oh, I'm putting a new tight skin, the skin of a sheep, over the ring of this tambourine. I struck it hard last night when dancing on the mountaintops. <laughs> so hard it split. Now, Pantheus, why have you come to see me? I ask you what you think you're doing. Your meaning isn't clear to Dancing me. on mountaintops at midnight to the frenzied music of your drums and pipes. But what arms in that? Singing vulgar songs in praise of this conjurer of the streets who'd have you think that he's a god. Where is your sense of decency and shame? I'm listening, Pentheus. You forget 
You are the mother of the island's governor. You forget you are not some mindless child, a careless schoolgirl. You're an old lady, mother. You should be serving as a model of restraint and dignity. Set an example to the other women. Instead, you drink this humbug's wine and act like... like a senile lunatic. Like some lascivious bored... <coughs> you slapped me, mother. Have you finished speaking, child? Now you listen to me. This street magician, as you've called him, will bring life back to our island. You'll see how right we women are to worship him. I can't believe you mean what you're saying. You call that worship. Indeed. You and your cronies, all you men, you stand around in shadowy corners, pleading to the gods in gloomy prayer. Well, we do no less, but we pray to our god, Zenos, under the open sky. We pray with joy and gladness, and he, he makes the blood warm and tingle in our veins like the spring sap in the trees, and sooner or later, he will make the rain to fall. Give him the chance to prove himself. I've ordered that he be placed in iron. You'll make a prisoner of a god? Unless this fraud, this libertine, agrees to leave our land never to return, I shall destroy him. Have him stoned to death. If you so much as harm one hair of Zeno's head, I will destroy myself. And you, Pentheus, my son, so jealous of your honor, you and you alone will take the blame. My own son's hand will plunge the dagger into his mother's breast. You understand me? I understand. Be careful, Cadmus. Those stones are very sharp beneath the feet. Yes, when I was young, my lord, I found few greater pleasures than playing in the sand along these shores, imagining myself the captain of some great sailing ship. Oh, Cadmus, Cadmus, what must we do about this Xenos? I've had him bound in chains. What must I do next? Let's prove to our women that he is no more than an imposter. That his promise of an end to drought is cruel and without truth. Cadmus, look there. There, where the shoreline curves. <laughs> it's a wreck. The ship's been wrecked, smashed all to pieces on the jagged rock. Its sails, they're torn to ribbons. Its lines ripped to shreds. It must have blown onto the rocks and crashed when the great wind came tearing out of nowhere. And the crew, the sailors. No sign of living souls. They must have drowned, all of them. Drowned beneath the waters of the roiling sea. Wait, wait, wait. Pentius, over there, the entrance leading to that grotto. One of the sailors, perhaps more than one, must have escaped the wreck. You you see, there's a boat. Let's look. If maybe we can find some little trace of life. Uh, I, I don't believe it. From stem to stern, from one end to the other, the boat is filled with goat skins. And filled, each one of them, with wine. The very goatskins, the same one. That supply the wine that Zenos is providing to our women. We now have all the proof we'll ever need. I, I don't understand. This rogue must be the sole survivor of the ship that foundered. He came ashore in this boat here. The goatskins floated on the water to the shore. He gathered them. And this is what he's using to persuade our ladies that he is a god. Hand me one of them, Cadmus. Now, now we have our proof. Why, Lord Pentheus, would he do this? We can only guess. He's an adventurer, albeit a very shrewd one. He saw this as an opportunity for self-aggrandizement, to puff up his importance, to live in glory for an hour or two. So now you know what steps to take. I do. I do. Thank you, my soldiers. Remain where you are. I see the prisoner from here. This way, Lord Pentheus. Excuse me, Your Excellency. May I pass? Young woman, I've seen you somewhere once before. I came to you pleading with my dead child. Why are you here? 
What brings you to this prison dungeon? I... I came... I came, Lord Pentheus, to see that this imposter, Zenos, was indeed in chains, in chains where he belongs. Uh, the soldiers at the door, they let me in to look. <laughs> then there's one woman on this island who's not been hoodwinked by this fraud. I leave, Your Excellence. Do what you must to help us all. You're here where you belong, my friend. Behind cold bars of iron, shackles on your feet. I do not plan to stay in here forever. That's good. I, too, have other plans for you. Yes, I'm sure. A few last words before you leave this island forever. Just as you please, my lord. You claim you are a god. I am a god. A god? In mortal form? The choice is mine. What do you know about a boat laden with goatskins? Goatskins filled with wine. Goatskins, my lord? Good. I know nothing. Nothing. I see. Would you tell me why you hold your sacred rites by dark of night? Or does the daylight frighten you? The darkness is well suited to devotion. Or better suited to the foul corruption of impressionable women? And this. You imagine things are happening with your women that for all you know may not be happening at all. These well may be the fantasies of your poor sick mind. The women of this land are fine and upright women. Such women cannot be corrupted by you, the island's men, even by me. The time for words is over. Soldiers, come unlock the gate. Remove the shackles from the prisoner's feet. He's leaving us forever. Spare yourself the trouble, my good lord. I leave this dungeon any time I wish, with or without your help. Oh, you don't believe me? Watch. I touch this lock that hangs upon the door, the shackles that bind my ankles. I touch them with the tip of my ivy-covered staff. And lo, the locks click open without a key of any kind. My feet are free. The iron door swings open. That girl, she found a way to get the keys. She found a way to open all these locks. Give me that staff of yours. I'll show you, Xenos, just how much magic lives within that staff. No need to struggle for it. Here it is. There! And there! It's splintered into a dozen pieces. Work your magic now. If that is your wish, your excellence. It's dark. The light is gone. Only the bolts of lightning. Help me! Someone! Venus! Save me! was once described as an illogical belief in the occurrence of the improbable, a firm trust that would seem to make no sense in the face of the impossible. Pentheus has refused to believe what he considers the irresponsible, corrupting credo of the stranger. Then why, when faced with circumstances beyond this comprehension, does he cry out to the same stranger for his help? I'll be back shortly with Act Three. Today in our country, we are not unfamiliar with the growth of cultism, a sacred ideology and a set of rights around certain symbols. We have had instances of young women blindly following and killing for a man they call their leader, of hordes of young people slavishly beating the drum for a man who has convinced them that he is an important means for their salvation. Faith can sometimes be a curious thing. As Pentheus recovers from the shock of this last experience with Zenus, Zenus says to him, You are not hurt, Lord Pentheus. No. No, Zenus. I'm all right. I think. What happened? What was that? That shattering sound, that blinding light. You splintered my good staff and challenged me. Work your magic, you commanded. And I did. Now, tell me something. Yes? When the earth seemed to burst from out its skin and we were lost in darkness, was not that your voice I heard 
crying desperately for my help, begging for me to save you. It was help from me. Me, whom you call a fraud, an imposter, a street magician, a master of hocus pocus. Or is it possible that you, along with the women you claim I have corrupted, are at last beginning to believe in my divinity? I ask the questions. Tell me, how did you get free? The prison door was locked. The iron chains that fettered you were strong. It was that girl who helped you. Am I right? The girl is innocent, Pentheus. A god can do such things. My lord, Pentheus, I am so glad I found you. What is it, Cadmus? What is this one doing here? I thought he'd been arrested, put in chains. He has been freed. Why are you here, Cadmus? You're, you're, you're needed, Pentheus. Since this one was condemned to jail, the women have gone absolutely mad. They tear up trees, beat animals to death with sticks, pillage the villagers, and successfully fight off anyone who dare oppose them. Go down, Cadmus, to the city gates. Order the infantry to duty, the javelin throwers and the archers. And this, I warn you, do not take arms against them. Your soldiers will be routed. The women's wands will even beat back shields of bronze. A god inspires them. Can anything on earth make you to hold your tongue? One thing, my lord. And that is... See for yourself what Cadmus calls the revelry on the mountaintop. Come with me tonight at midnight. See how innocent it is. Innocent indeed. Come, come, convince yourself. But you must come disguised. Why so? Well, if they discover someone spying on their sacred rites, great harm might come of it. There might be bloodshed. What disguise? I have a mountain lion skin complete from head to tail. You'll fasten it about you. Then, even if you're seen, no one will know it's you. Where do we meet? At the foot of the mountain, just before midnight. I shall be there. Come, Cadmus. Young woman, hey, you, you there, come out of the shadows. Is it safe now? Have they gone? Until 12 tonight, my little one. He's fallen for the trap and thrashes in the net I've thrown for him. Blessed is he who escapes a storm at sea, who comes home to his harbor. Blessed is he who gathers day by day the good things of his life. Blessed is he. Blessed is Zenos. Do you see them, Pentheus? Not very well, but I hear them. There is Agave, your excellence mother. I can hardly see her. From where I lie here in the grass, the brush obscures my vision. Lower your voice or they'll discover you. No, no. Don't try to stand. How then can I see? I have an idea. It may be if you climb that towering fir tree that overhangs the banks, then you could see them better. The tree is too high. Watch what I am about to do. I reach for the high branch of this tall fir, and I bend it down. Down to the dark earth. Quietly so no one can hear. What are you up to? Now, now hang on tightly to the highest tip. Hold fast as I release it slowly, inch by inch. Are you all right up there, Lord Pentheus? Do you see all? I'm fine. I see everything. That's good. And I see that you lied. You told me they'd be winding stalks of ivy on the wands they carry. Their hands busily moving in their quiet tasks. You lied, Zenos. Old Cadmus spoke the truth. Women of the island, a wild, bloodthirsty beast sits cowering in the branches of this tree. Shower it with stones, hurl javelins, draw bows, and shoot your arrow straight into its heart. We hear you, Zenos. We do what you have asked. Bar! Bar, shoot straight! Unless you kill this beast, he'll pounce upon you from the tree, and with sharp claws and pointed fangs, he'll... Tear you all to pieces. Ha! Good. Good. You have found your mark. 
You've brought the evil creature to the ground. But while it still breathes, it is still gasping for its life. I'll stop that with my javelin, Zena. Do it, Agave. Jab your spear between its bloody ribs. So! So! And stop! Stop, mother! Stop! Whose voice is that? The wine has confused me. It's Ventheus, your son. Pity me. Spare me, mother. Hold back your hand. Since when have wild beasts learned to talk? Strike! Strike with your javelin! Strike one last telling blow! There! The creature's dead. At your brave hands, Agave. The mountain lion's dead, Agave. Slaughtered by you alone. How proud you must be. I'll bring more wine so we can celebrate. I shan't be long. Where's my son? I must tell him what I have done. Find me, Pentheus. Let Pentheus see. He'll be proud of me, won't he? He'll nail the head of this wild lion against a high wall somewhere as a trophy to my skill. He'll do that, won't he? Won't he do that? What, what, what happened here, your women? Where is Pentheus? It sounds like Cadmus' voice. It is I, it is Cadmus. I fear for Pentheus' safety. Cadmus, look at the mountain lion I just killed in the dark. With my own hands, I killed it. Oh, uh, what have you done, Nekavi? This body lying at your feet, bathed in its own blood, is... It is no mountain lion. It is not? See, I pull the animal's skin away. And, and there lies... Who, who is it, Cadmus? Let me look. Your own son, Pentheus. Oh, oh. Your own flesh and blood. Oh. Uh, he is what uh, you've killed, me, Gabby. Oh, You've murdered your own son. No. My own son? No. <laughs> No, no. Oh, my son. Oh, my son. Let me lift you to my breast. <laughs> weep with you, my God. What is this that I hold in my arms and clasp against my bosom? Oh, my son, my son. What happened to you? Why do I hold you so? Tell me, Cadmus, tell me. Your son <laughs> is dead. He cannot answer you. The crime is mine, Cadmus, mine alone. I see it clearly now. The fumes have lifted from my brain. The prize I thought to carry home with such great pride is my destruction. Upon these hands I bear the curse of my child's blood. Oh, God's... What dirge can I sing? What funeral song? What lamentation? As I rock back and forth, cradling my dead child here in my arms. Oh, you gods. Be merciful to a miserable, unhappy woman who should be in her grave. Enough, enough, no more. You cannot bring your dead son back to life. Give me a shroud. Cover for his corpse. Oh, dearest face. Oh, pretty boyish mouth. I place this last kiss on your dead lips. Now with this veil I shroud your head, gathering with loving care these mangled limbs. This flesh I brought to birth. Here is the wine. The goat skins overflow. Now, now we can celebrate. What brings you here, old man? I came to see what happened to my master. He's dead. I am old, but I am not blind. Dead in his mother's arms. Dead by his mother's hand, guided to its fatal mark by you. And God, oh no, God, you will pay for this. You'll not escape this time. Go away, old man, before you come to that same fate. This man has found the death that he deserved. He defied a god. I stay. Then watch what happens next. This is what happens next. False god. Be 
Do you try to kill me with the weapon that you used to spear your son? You're mad, old woman. No one can kill a god. A god is murdered only by himself and no one else. But I am not pitiless, not unforgiving. For all of you, one final draft of wine. For old time's sake, then I'll drink with you. Here, pass the goat skins out among you. Now... Drink. Drink deep. Each one of you. I do not drink with murderers. The pleasure is theirs, old fool. And mine. To the living. And the dead. What is happening? What's happening to the women? They're dying, Cadmus. In a moment, they'll be corpses. The wine... Shot through with a quick and deadly poison. But a kindly poison. Though they die peacefully, you can see without a bit of pain. Xenos! Xenos! Oh, now my turn comes. I tell you that there is no pain. No pain at all. No pain. All dead. Oh, pity on you, gods. Take pity on us all. Rain. Oh, gentle rain. The drought is ended. The gods have listened to our prayers. As the blessed rains soak into the parched earth of the island, the men are left to weep for the tragic death of their young governor, of their wives, their mothers, their sisters, and their daughters. And you may ask, who is this Zenus? That depends upon your faith, on what you would like to believe. I'll be back shortly. A god? Or not a god. As we said earlier, as far as faith is concerned, you pay your money and you take your choice. The story you have just heard was based on the Bacchae, one of the most famous tragedies of Euripides, the great playwright of ancient Greece, who in his time took almost every prize ever given for dramatic writing. This, some 2,400 years ago. Our cast included John Vickery, Marion Seldes, Earl Hammond, and Tracy Ellis. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my other YouTube channel by searching Mr. Brian McCarthy in the YouTube search bar. Until then, thanks for listening.